Yeah. Yes, the recording is in progress. Hear that, everybody? Okay. Hello. How are you? What's doing? What's new? Here I am, right? Okay. All right. And, oh, God, we ton of people wanting to come on here. So what the hell? Let's get going here. Here we uh, got Marjorie and we got Paula Levin back with us, Paula, uh, after uh, some weeks away. Uh, Mike Chisholm, uh, there's uh, Charlene Solis. Uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, our favorite voice, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. And uh, <laughs> Lem, what are you nodding your head for? because <laughs> on his birthday i said that's right that's right yeah <laughs> got a lot of those messages <laughs> <laughs> and marjorie how are you doing today not as dizzy as yesterday but not as dizzy as yesterday uh and francine witt hello she's back again she wasn't here last week but here she is now uh i said mike chisholm and of course uh uh, one of the newer people to our panel, John Ewing, is here, and uh, hopefully we'll see a few more as we go on. Uh, and uh, Marjorie's here today. Glad to see Marjorie. She hasn't taken a bath in uh, a shower. In, <laughs> Not true. Uh, a week and two <laughs> days. Don't listen to him. A week he and lies two days. Up and down. Now the other sin here is neither have I. <laughs> Don't like, even listen to him. Well, explain how you feel about showers lately. I feel fine. I took my shower yesterday. No, you didn't. I did too. No, you didn't. Alex. <laughs> you said we were going to take it on Tuesday. I took it yesterday. <laughs> you just haven't taken yours. Did you really take one yesterday? Yes. And you didn't tell me? Well, it was seven in the morning. Oh, well, I would have done it. We had a couple hours. I would have done it when I woke up. But it you, you just did. I'll do it this evening. I will do it this evening. Okay. Usually Saturdays is the day for the... Or Sunday. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm really glad we got that all sorted out. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> thank God this you can't smell us. Yeah. Today, so that's well, cool. What, what's this? What's with the x-ray? Oh, oh, I had to go, uh, uh, you know, I have a little arthritis here, and I go and get a uh, cortisone shot. But this time, he wanted an x-ray on me because he didn't have an x-ray on me. He had one at the old place he worked, but he didn't think to go over there and get it, but he got Marjorie's. So I had to do a, um, I had to do a, uh, um, um, an x-ray so that was the x-ray and I thought it was a cool x-ray it looked like <laughs> I was going okay you know <laughs> so that's why the uh, the x-ray is there it was okay. cute. I, I, as I looked at it I thought to myself excellent bone structure <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the bones you know so then, he, then, he, then he stuck me with a needle and put in the cortisone and when he pulled it out I bled like a stuck pig because oh, I have such a baby. No, I have low platelets now. You're still a baby. And I think you that had something to do with it. Okay. It may not have had anything to do with it. He may have actually hit a little artery or something or a vein or what whatever. But I, I bled like a stuck pig, but it stopped. So here we go. <laughs> but that there are two other pictures of my hands, but I like that one. Okay, it was, I think it was like this. Yeah. There's there's just something not kosher about bleeding like that, Alex. There's what? Uh, yeah. Something not kosher about bleeding like that. <laughs> Is there something? I don't get it. Uh, there's something you said a stuck pig. probably more of a Jew than I am. No, no. <laughs> no, I, 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 I grew up Jewish until I reached the age of reason. Oh, I, <laughs> we all. Yeah. Well, I like being Jewish. But there's I'm a sorry. heritage and there's a religion. I like being Jewish. Yeah, I like the cultural part of it, not the religious part. Yeah. Francine is going yes, see? Yeah, I agree. And there's, yeah, I'm Jewish, but, I, you know, I, like, I don't practice, which is what I am, you know. 
Well, you don't have to practice. You're not required to do anything as a Jew, yeah. and you're still always a Jew. It's not like with those damn Catholics that if they don't go <laughs> one Sunday, they're yeah. excommunicated. You know, I just got tired like of being, always having to it, circumcise it, the hot dogs before I ate them. It kind of, is, <laughs> it kind of is like being MAGA. Being MAGA because if you do anything wrong, you're no longer MAGA. <laughs> you know, quite like being a Catholic. So. Anyway, hey, listen, Paul is back with us. Paul was out for about what three weeks, Paul? No, it was, I think it was more like two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I went on an adventure that I really didn't uh, anticipate. Good surgery. Yeah, you know, it's I one of those things where you, where you go into the hospital for a cold, and before you know it, they've operated on your entire body. Close, close, close. I thought uh, uh, that I had intestinal an intestinal virus. Um, but I, I couldn't keep anything down. And I, I finally uh, uh, went to the ER and they took a, a, a picture and they said, you got a blockage and shipped, shipped me off to the, uh, uh, in an ambulance without wow. the siren, but uh, uh, to, to the hospital. And the next morning I had surgery and, and. Um, well, what it was, was probably a hernia. It was a hernia. And, and it was a hernia that did what? It, it's, it's called a, it's not called a blockage. It's called a Huh? Strangulated? No, yeah, no, strangulated. no. This, this was, this was a block. I'm not going to go into detail, but it was, it, it, it was. What can I say? There was a piece of, 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 of an appendix that I never had removed that was stuck right. in, in an intestine. That, that was the, the long short of really? it. Really? I was, wow. it was bizarre. Anyway, uh, I had arthroscopic surgery, so I have these little weird things, you know, like dots. Dots. Uh huh. Dots. And and um and that was it. Wow. But I, you know, it was like everything turned upside down. I, you know, like I thought that I had a virus because you know, like that's a, there's yeah. a lot. Of, well, you had all the symptoms. Of of yeah. Yeah. And and what a big surprise. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be back and reporting on it. That's oh. enough. And we're glad to have you back. We're glad. Yes. Thank you very much. Glad. I miss Joel. We are glad to have you back, and you look healthy. Thank you. It's one of those unsurprising. Those are one of those things. You go in for one thing, and it turns out to be another. And before you know it, you know you come out with several scars on your body. Son of a gun! Wow, wow. <laughs> well, apparently, you went to a good hospital. So, yeah. Well, we have Cleveland Clinic here, and uh, and the the surgeon. Is some amazing lady, man. I tell you, I'm I'm really proud of the the professional women that are on the spot now. She was amazing. Wow, really, very That's impressive good. lady. That's terrific. I'm happy for you that you're well now and that you're feeling good. Because I kept asking Marjorie, "Have you heard anything from uh, from oh, yeah. Paula? You know, is she okay?" Because Paul is one of my favorite people that Marjorie knows. You know, in fact, of all your people, she's my favorite. <laughs> You know, and uh, we love having you when you come here because she's you. good for sitting down and talking for hours about stuff with. You're very, you know, really good. Thank you. I very love her. And, and, well, I went and, in and I and well I well returned. Well, I, we got our ham. We got our we got our family cortisone shots. I got this finger. <laughs> 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 that's a very useful finger. Yeah, that's my finger. I've got the cortisone. If you don't have that one working, you're in bad. <laughs> you're gone. Yeah. You know? Well, oddly enough, that's where I was last week. I went to a hand doctor because I have my thumbs and he won't give me cortisone anymore. I had thumb I had thumb shots about a year ago. What, what you yeah. you you gotta you gotta suffer? No, I have to have surgery. I'm going to do that in a couple of weeks. Oh, they want to have surgery. Oh, wow. yeah. Right. Because they just say, we will do it till it doesn't work anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, what you have may not be arthritis. No, no, it's not. It's like a, I don't know. It's not arthritis, but it could get it, like a trigger finger, but it's not actually become a trigger finger yet. So not this finger. No, it's my, <laughs> both my thumbs. Both and, thumbs. It's oh, from, and you can't do that. <laughs> Too yeah. much hitchhiking in your youth. <laughs> what did you say? What did you Too say? Too much hitchhiking in your youth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, um, 
And then yesterday we had lunch. We went down to the. Uh, oh. What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> no, it, it, it's uh, it, we we. It was we, a long day, Alex. It was a long day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was uh, we went to the Ukrainian old folks home, which is not a Ukrainian old folks home anymore. Uh, it it got bombed, and uh, <laughs> no, uh, the and, restaurant's but, still there. And, but they have in there. There has always been. It was there forty years ago. The last time I was there was forty years ago. There is a Ukrainian restaurant, and they serve pierogi and, and goulash and borscht. They didn't have cold borscht, though, yesterday, so that was bad. But anyway, so we had lunch. We had lunch with some friends, and it was, it was a, a nice day for us. You know, we don't we don't get down that far anymore. You know, it was down at St. Mark's Place. So. Yeah. It was a hard day for me yesterday. You know the place, be... Christine? Uh, you were going, you were nodding. Yeah, yeah Francie. Yeah, um, it's near where, where uh, like Stomp used to be. Like it's sort oh, of yeah, downstairs. Yeah, yeah I've been there. It's right on yeah. the other uh, other yeah. block. And it. Yeah. Uh, you go in and it's like, uh, in the old days, it was just like an old folks home, right? You're going, there's a restaurant in here. And at the very end, yeah, it's, it's a like... restaurant. And it's it really hasn't changed in 40 years. It's still the same uh, same thing, you know. So it was it was it was nice. You had a nice time, didn't you, Marjorie? I did. I was just hurting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Why? You're always hurting. So I I get dizzy. It started about four or five weeks she ago. She got this dizzy thing that I've had for a year now. It's just like vertigo. And uh she can't shut up about it. So, you know. I don't um... Shut up about it. <laughs> Hey, oh, by the way, hello to um, um, uh, Mandy, who has joined us. Hello. She is waving to us uh, through her little phone there that she uses. Yeah. yeah. I like to on, on yeah, why, why is it always portrait mode, though? Can you, If you turn it sideways. Because I prop up my phone. Oh, there you go. Yeah, the, there you go. Better, there. better. Yeah. Okay. You know, Wide it's, angle. We see more of your office. <laughs> Here it is in all its glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Is that just your office now? Yeah, I'm in a little, I'm in an office in a big office. Well, we know it's in a bigger office, but it's a small <laughs> office space in a larger. It's kind of big. I mean, it's, I actually have a nice size office. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, you know. With windows all around. So. And I'm in a corner you, office. Are you, are you in there pretty much by yourself all day long? I mean, is there... no, nah, there's other people here. Oh, there are other people in that room. Oh, there's other people right here. I'm sure we're disturbing the hell out of them. <laughs> <No. laughs> well, well, screw. There's like yeah. cubicles right outside my office. Oh, just um, a but... warning for you because you're in Georgia. Marjorie Taylor Green is going home. So. Okay, I'll make sure I steer clear of. <laughs> Calhoun or where the hell she lives. Calhoun? No idea. Is that the name of the county? <laughs> it, there's a town. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like um, Dalton, Calhoun. I'm trying to think of some of the other towns in that district. That but it's like, in North, it's like Northwest Georgia. That's like in the corner of Alabama and Tennessee, you know, or yeah. up in that area. It's a lawyer on uh, Amos and Andy. Calhoun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a prize. She's a peach. <laughs> she, she's she's a, a peach. In Georgia? That's a good thing to say. She's I guess. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, so anyway, uh, what was it? Uh, there was a piece of, there was a piece of news today that I, that I, that I just saw and then I forgot what it was. So that's why I don't do talk shows anymore. Um, <laughs> How are you doing up there in Canada, Michael? Oh man, I've had a I've had a good week, and uh, and to top it off, there's a new Ghostbusters movie, which is just that's that's right that's right in my heart. Ghostbusters was made for for for, for me, and so that was a lot of fun going there and seeing it on opening night, and uh, wow. got some good Letterman podcast stuff. Got some good stuff going on. Yeah, no, just lots of good stuff. How yeah. was that movie? We almost went to see it this weekend. Okay, so I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. Um, okay. and, and so like, like Ghostbusters Afterlife, I cried three times during Afterlife. 
Um, I couldn't get past the first 20 minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Wow. If you look at the end, the Harold Ramis stuff they do at the end is just, oh, oh yeah. Well, in this oh, film, God. Harold Ramis is in it. Right? In, the, in the after Afterlife. Uh, yeah, this yeah. one here, uh, Harold Ramis passed away, and so Afterlife did a, did a lovely tribute to him. But this movie here, with the new generation, um, to me, it felt like an episode of the old Ghostbusters cartoon that I that I grew up with. It had the same beats. You started with a cool action piece, the Ghostbusters doing something in the city. Then it went on to the bigger mystery and a bigger thing all the way to the end when they fight the big bad guy at the end. I absolutely loved it. I don't really care what other people think. I haven't looked at any of the reviews. I felt like a kid again watching it. So I don't know if I can endorse that any higher. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Michael, Michael Snyder reviewed it and uh, he said it was okay. You know, I but told I'm, him that I really didn't like anything past the first Ghostbusters film. Yeah. yeah. I felt all the rest were kind of, yeah. You know. Yeah. But you After probably like, have a different set of expectations the- because I don't think you maybe were around for the first one being released, were you? Me? No way. Oh, oh. yeah, you were. Of course you, you were. was oh, a yeah. baby. No, I was not. <laughs> was a baby. <laughs> I was you had to have been. It came out like Is that what you did 84? to your kids? That must have was, really <laughs> rattled their brains. I was I was in Mrs. Vandermeer's grade three class because <laughs> okay. I remember that because a whole bunch of the boys had t shirts that said, I've been slimed on them. (laughs) Very much so. Yeah. Grade three. I saw it. I saw it once uh, with my dad and my older sister in its first week. And back then, movies were held over, right? And it was held over so many. And it was a full theater. Everyone screamed in laughter. uh, And it was, it was, I I can remember being in the theater. And uh, it was held over so many weeks. I begged my father. Please take me again. It's one of the few times as a as a as a kid um, that my father took me to a movie, the same movie twice, and so okay. I can I can remember that very well. I couldn't find tickets, and who was I going to call? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I uh, you know yeah, we watch we've been watching this thing called the Three Body Problem. Very strange. <laughs> it's on Netflix. It's yeah. on Netflix, and it's done by the guys who did uh, Game of Thrones, and it's really, I think it's kind of good. Weird. Okay. Very weird. It's on my list. Huh? So it's on it's my on, list. Why? It's, it's on your list, right? Yeah. Are you familiar with the book? No. No. But it, it is. Somebody described it as a modern a modern version of war of the worlds you know and it kind of is turning out that way it's very interesting very fascinating it's on uh, it's on uh, netflix what else did we see see anything else that we uh the other one where she was uh, in the spaceship constellation yeah on apple that's very good and also um um uh, what was the thing about uh, uh um What's his name? The the sounds like the clothier Christian Dior. You know, the, oh yeah, yeah. The new look. I the think. new look. Yeah. Paul, well, I was going to put these on the list for you, but these <laughs> okay. These are all good. They're they're, they're very all good. good. I'll tell you what I saw that 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 uh, you, you guys might find interesting. Probably no more a lot more than I do about it. There was a a, a, a PBS show uh, uh, about uh, the sound. Uh, uh, in movies, oh yeah, through the twentieth century, and and I mean, I I knew that 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 was you know a big part of of movie making, but the complexity of it, I really did not really. Are you talking about music or everything? Every, okay. Everything. So it had all these all these uh, things like you know like how did they figure out what the Wookiee sounded like in Star Wars and 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 uh, so what it's on PBS. On PBS, it was like an hour and a half show. Uh, uh, was there a name for the show? Something like uh, um, Sound in Film, something like that. Oh, okay. Well, we'll look and it up. It, uh, look it up. It, it's absolutely fascinating, and and how they came up with all the all the different ways that, that they that I mean that they they make it like a like a, um or, like orchestration, which is. You bring something up, and then you, you you put something down, 
and and there's all kinds of magical things that that you wouldn't and, you wouldn't guess all, how it, they it, did that. It's only one show, right? It's only one episode. Yeah. 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 Okay. But it had on there like like uh you know all, all the big uh, directors and there was a bit even on on uh, Barbara Streisand who apparently was very um influential when she made when they made the the um Stars Born uh, um that that uh, she had her own ideas about the way sound should happen mm -hmm. and uh, she she uh, got with the the guys that were well known in the profession and a lot of them were uh, um guys that that had grown up with the movies and had tinkered with it as teenagers at home you know with with the mm -hmm. tape recorders and all kinds of crazy stuff and later were like the big names in hollywood that people called when they when they had uh, something to do uh, um to 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 augment a film or to to make it a, a, the thing real anyway it was wonderful i don't yeah. know if that if I mean, sound must have been a part of your life too, right, Alex? Oh yeah, uh, all of my life, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything I it, well, to begin with, I grew up on radio, and I grew up on radio dramas and things like that, and shows mm -hmm. that had uh, drama and comedy too. But I was always attuned to how things sound when they're coming through a radio. So my whole perception of radio even when i went into it as a as a professional in a later in later years when radio wasn't doing plays and things like that my whole idea of of radio was that it was the uh most visual medium right because of the way you could paint pictures with sound and so that's why i had a live mm -hmm. studio audience uh things like that because that all goes back to old radio. And uh, I always was very aware of how whatever we were doing came across on the air while we were doing it so that it painted a picture. Absolutely. And I think anybody here who listened to me can say they used to listen to it and kind of it painted a picture of what was going on in the studio. Did, did the radio stations hate you for doing that? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, because I did it the way that I did it, they actually loved it. They loved it because it got big ratings and big ratings mean big money. Mm. And so I could basically come in and dump, take a dump on the general manager's desk and he would smile and say, oh, Alex, you know, <laughs> uh, you can get away with anything. You can get away with anything as long as you're getting decent ratings. So that's why yeah. rating, ratings were very important to me. You know, gave me freedom. So, but the idea, the idea of sound painting a picture is is that that's what this whole thing yeah. was about. Well, that's the whole thing that I grew up on. You know, I grew up on listening to a you know a, a western on radio, and you know, hearing the horses going clomping down the road, and right, with the, but, the guys in the background yeah, doing this. But I then had to add my visuals to it. Mm -hmm. One thing though that really disappointed. Mm -hmm. me was eventually, in most cases, I would come across, so say, an article on a show I liked, and it would show a picture of the star of the show. And I would suddenly go, Ooh. how does that voice come out of that guy? <laughs> you know, like Matt Dillon on radio was, uh, was what's his name? William, uh, Conrad. Uh, William Conrad. 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 Yeah, who's a big, fat, dumpy guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you would look at him and go, how, how does Matt Dillon's voice come out of him? I can't imagine that voice coming out of that guy. So the, mm. I, I tried to never see what my heroes looked like. Right. I learned that early on. Yeah, yeah. Well, Other, they had, they had the whole thing with, with Orson Welles and 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 uh, um, the uh, Apocalypse Now people and and uh, the, the Godfather people and the Star Trek people. You know, it was just absolutely fascinating how they how they manipulated. Um, you know, you think about music or sound effects, but you don't think about this whole big spectrum of things that 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 they that that is sound. But when I was a little kid, okay, I was a little kid once. By the way, I want you to know this is what happens to you <laughs> if you're a little kid and you live too long. Okay. <laughs> Um, but my mother, I had a favorite radio show. It was called Let's Pretend. 
And what it was was every week they would do a drama based on a fairy tale of some sort, right? So I love this show. I just thought I thought I was crazy about it. So when we were in New York, my mother, unbeknownst to me, and as a big surprise to me, got tickets to go see the radio show. So now we're sitting there watching them do the radio show. And it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Because to begin with, I couldn't figure out all the stuff that was going on. It was easier to follow it if you were listening to it on the radio. You know, uh, but it was harder to follow it when you saw everybody standing there in front of microphones with scripts and a guy doing sound effects over in the corner and so on. No magic. But, yeah. The magic completely went away. And I don't think I ever listened to Let's Pretend again um, in quite the same way. But that, <clears throat> that that influenced what I did in radio and how I did it, because I believe that the old radio was the best radio because it painted pictures. Radio doesn't paint pictures anymore. You know, it's a disc jockey reading from a from a cue card in the, in the studio and then going to somebody a record which is him basically using other people's talent to entertain you. Um and I I just never wanted to be a disc jockey. I was for a while. You had to be when you started out, but I didn't like being a disc jockey because I just didn't like the idea of having to rely on other people's talent so it uh you know hey alex yes i was uh reviewing some of your uh passing lane videos and it brought to mind uh you were at k tim and san rafael weren't you ktim yeah yeah is that just a brief stint there no actually uh that was the first radio station i was ever employed by did you know a guy named <clears throat> excuse me michael st john no. Okay. No. He later drove a cab, but he used to come into my ice cream store. We see what happened was uh, the KTIM was a, a, a uh, radio station in San Rafael, California. And when I was in high school, they did a Saturday show called The Big Four. And what it was is that each of the Big Four high schools in Marin County were invited to do 15 minutes a week on this station. And so I was part of the broadcasting club at Drake High. And so we produced the show every week. And um, so that's where I kind of started doing radio. I wasn't paid for it or anything. But then later on, when I graduated high school, I started working there part time uh, as an announcer. And so that was my first radio station ever. And uh uh, that was that was the beginnings of my career, uh, and uh, thankfully not the the end of it. So you know, that's right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, is it still, it's not KTIM anymore, is it? It's. I don't think it even exists anymore. Oh, I'm sure it does. I'm sure somebody did something with the signal. Oh. But what it was, it was a daytimer, and daytimers were <laughs> radio stations that had to sign off at sunset. And of course, it's pretty you popular, Marin. But yeah, but well, when you first heard it, when I was doing it, it wasn't popular at all. Uh -huh. you know? um, uh, and plus, it, it got an FM signal, so they were able to go 24 um, 7. But uh, in my day, it was a daytimer, and we had to sign off at sunset, which, of course, as you know, is a different time every month. <laughs> so in the middle of the of of uh, summer, uh, we were signing off at a quarter of nine at night, and at the middle of winter, we were signing off at a quarter of five in the afternoon. So you know, my job was dependent on when the sun went down, That's as to how much money I was going to make. Um, yeah. But uh, the, yeah, they, they, and a lot of radio stations were that way, and the reason they were is that they were protecting the signal of what they called a clear channel station, a station that could go almost across the country with 50,000 watts. But if you were on at night, because there's an, what we called a night signal that went out, um, you could go further too with that. We, we were like a thousand watts, I think. <clears throat> and if we did, we would interrupt this other signal 
So you had to sign off at sunset. And that was the reason why. And at night, you used to be able to do <clears throat> AM radio and listen to the stations thousand miles away. I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, listening to KDKA in Pittsburgh. Well, the reason is, is, is there's a, th there a thing called Skywave. Yeah, it's and the Skywave went into in, into uh, work. It was started to work uh, after the sun went down. Mm -hmm. You know, and the 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 uh, day wave went along right. the ground. Uh, it's a whole complete. I don't know if they even have day timers anymore, or whether they did something. So. You know, but I I that that's uh, that's what what was the problem with KTIM. You know, they didn't know what they were exactly. Also, you had to sign on at different times in the day. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. now everything is like satellite. Is that would that be true? Everything is uh, from from satellites. No, th that really has nothing to do with the signal of a terrestrial radio station. They're still the same. They have a transmitter somewhere, and they're sending out you know a signal. Um, and uh, wherever you are on the dial, like for instance, we were down at fifteen ten on the dial. Mm. That meant that we actually had a weaker signal than if we had the same thousand watts at five sixty. I know this is all technical, but it 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 made for a crazy kind of world in mm -hmm. which some people had a real advantage to make a buck, and everybody else, a, a bunch of other people, were having to suffer by this whole daytimer status. So mm. uh, it was uh, it was an interesting time to be brought up doing radio. Um, yeah, you know that really? what. Radio was huge back then. I mean, that was, that's all. What else did you do in your car? You didn't have Bluetooth and all this shit. You, you listen to AM or FM radio. Well, today people, I don't think people listen to AM and FM radio anymore. I, I know I don't. I listen to Pandora or whatever. So, yeah. I do sometimes. I'll, I'll listen to it sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. For, for, for a kick. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, for the novel. Yeah. They, in Atlanta, they brought back this station that was really popular in the, the mid 90s, probably for like 10 years or so. And it was like alternative rock. And they brought, they even brought back the original disc jockeys oh, wow. in the morning. It said, yeah, it's they pretty did cool. They that in San Francisco with Live 105. They, they mm -hmm. took it off the station I was on there and they put it back on. But did they ask any of the people who were on the original Live 105 to come back? I didn't get a telephone call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and sometimes they bring a station back, but they bring it back in name only. And I think mm -hmm. in the case of Live 105, they brought it back in name only. But mm -hmm. anyway, you know, and when I think back, I mean, God, that was a long time ago. Jeez. I, I, I have a question about the breakfast with Bennett Supper with Schwartzman thing. Who, who paid for all of that? The station? Ad oh, advertisers paid to be they paid okay. to be on it. We charge premium rates for that. Okay, all right. Yeah, we did these uh, these live broadcasts from like uh, Suffolk with Schwartzman was usually Christmas time, and we did it from the Fairmont Hotel, the Venetian room of the Fairmont Hotel, with a full oh. orchestra and singers and everything. You know, like a good old fashioned radio show. Those were great. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, um, th 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 I'm most proud of that. But I was able to pull that off. I mean, that's the way I would like the show to be every morning with an orchestra and a da 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 da, da you know, full show like Letterman had, but without the visual. Okay. And that's All essentially right. what we were doing, only we couldn't have an orchestra every morning because we couldn't afford an orchestra every morning. Mm -hmm. you, know. you had a live orchestra. Yeah, we yeah. had a live orchestra. We had a, a 12 piece orchestra, was it? Yeah. Was it Dick Bright? Dick Bright. Yeah. Yeah. And then later on, it was Buddy Love did the did the orchestra. Right. I remember coming out of a couple of those at ten o'clock in the morning, drunk off my ass. Oh, 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 oh you mean the uh, the those were breakfasts with Bennett. Breakfasts, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, we, there, we brought in a lot of comedians to do the show. We had a whole audience, and it was wonderful. But uh, you know, I I wish I wish uh, Ed Cramp were here because he could tell us how much money they made off those shows. We could probably yeah. find yeah. out. You know, let's, let's remember uh, that. Yeah, yeah, you look very nostalgic about those days, Len. Uh, yeah, I love that's how I met this guy. I mean, I've been listening to him since the 80s, and I mean, so being able to talk to him, I always tell him that I said it's such a treat 
after he was talking to me for 40 for 30 years and now i get to talk to him and that's really cool yeah. i feel the same i feel the same way my my whole morning every mo monday through friday yeah while i work because i work from six to ten i could listen to the radio and i listened every monday through friday six to ten every yeah. day and you were yeah. like i just i couldn't even tell you how much you made so to isn't me. this a disappointment <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. It's a pleasure. It's you a really treat. did used to be a big It's a treat. Star. Well, I mean, I have a, a you know thing on my Facebook Facebook page that says I used to be a big shot. You did. Um, oh, I think I changed it to he used to be a big shot because I'm quoting the movie The Roaring Twenties, ah. which uh, when the cop asked uh, uh, the girlfriend of uh, Jimmy Cagney, who is mm -hmm. he? Because he's dead. And she says who he is. And so what did he do? And she says, he used to be a big shot. <laughs> that always kind of resonated with me because every time I, I suddenly realized I used, I used to be a big shot, you know, so. Well, the same is for me, except for mine was the Sirius XM, the Sirius Love. Oh, really? I, mean, yeah. I used to listen every morning, like leave my off, leave, get in my car, drive to my little job, go to the McDonald's drive through, <laughs> listen to <laughs> people calling into your show. Yeah. Yep. But that's why I was just crazy. Well, you know, because I was Facebook, but then I was Facebook friends with you, you know, yeah. but not obviously not interacting with you, you. You know, it's funny. There are people who have different uh, images of me based on where I was working. There are people who I hear from occasionally who remember when I was on WPLJ here in New York. Mm -hmm. That was another you. Yeah, you that's when that? I listened. Yeah, it was a that's... different incarnation then my San Francisco shows, and that was a different incarnation than what I did at Sirius XM. But the great thing about radio in those days was you could literally change markets and reinvent yourself. Sure. You know, if you didn't like, if the old act was getting a little tired and you were getting tired of doing it, you could go somewhere else. You know, in San Francisco, it was kind of known as the king of comedy. In New York, in the early years on WPLJ, I was known as the youth guru. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I have a question. So yeah. the music that you have at Gabnet, that little intro music was, you know, that's what you had at Serious Left, right? No. You didn't no. have that intro music? I thought you did. Somehow. No, I can't use that music because uh, it's copyrighted. And unless I pay for it to somebody like... Uh, um, one of the music licensing organizations like ASCAP or BMI, um, mm -hmm. I, I can't use it. So I pay for the music I use. It's, it's a music service. It costs me about 150 bucks a year. And that's where that. I, I don't know why I thought that you had that. Did you have some music at the beginning of your show when you would Oh, start? yeah, I had some really good stuff. I had used Arturo Sandoval for the music at the end of the show. In the beginning yeah. of the show, we really used the original uh, song from uh, the movie, The Great American Broadcast. Okay. Mm. This is The Great American Broadcast. Right, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, That's what I remember, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yeah. started using that after we went to, uh, where was it? We went to the Iowa caucuses. And I oh, somehow wow. found that song and we started using it at that caucus. And then I used it from then on as the theme. Oh, I also had another theme I used, which was, uh, um, uh, what's his name? The guy, the New Orleans musician, uh, uh, Professor Longhair. And it was mm -hmm. called Rum and Coke, which is an old Rum and Coca-Cola song. But again, another song that's copywritten. So I can't, yeah. you know. I mean, I can use it, but then I get demonetized by uh, YouTube. Can and, you tell and, the back the huh? backstory on that National Lampoon album that you were on? How you got that? Story? Well, I uh, I knew the people over the National Lampoon. You know, they came and did my show a lot, and so on and so forth. When I was in New York at WMCA, and uh, they were going to do a comedy album, and they wanted to know if I'd do voices on it. So I said, sure. You know, but essentially, I did a lot of stuff on that album. It all got cut out. Hmm. Um, and um, it was one I think I I, I got to uh, dislike. What's his name? Uh, the guy who did quite a few movies. He's uh, like the movie about the dog show and uh, uh, um, Christopher Guest. Christopher Guest. Yeah. Christopher Christopher Guest. Guest. yeah. 
uh, he and I were on that album together and he and I just didn't like each other. And he was like a bigger person at the national lampoon than I was. And he had me taken out of a lot of bits that we did. Oh, yeah. nasty. Yeah. Really? He's a nasty jerk. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> well, it's funny. it's funny. Years later, I'm doing my radio show in San Francisco, right at uh, the Quake. Why? Well, it must sound to a lot of people like I worked a lot of radio stations. You can't hold a job. Huh? Yeah. But I can't hold a job. A lot. But if you knew the history of it, I really did hold uh, jobs a lot. Anyway, here was the thing. He, uh, they, uh, one morning, Rob Reiner and uh, who else? A couple other people from Spinal Tap show up to be on my show. They're prom promoting Spinal Tap. And Chris Guest, he's who's in the studio hosting uh, the show, uh, and he won't come in. Uh, that's that's how long that little argument lasts. Uh, you know, wow. that's all the way from New York to San Francisco to Chris Guest saying, I'm not going in there. That's Alex Bennett. Uh, 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 yeah. so. it, it pains me to say this because I love this story. Uh, I have to go. I'm so sorry. I've got to say goodbye to everybody. Uh, um, I'm going to ask you about that again, Alex. That's a fantastic story already. Those guys are awesome. So thank you, guys. Have a great, great week. Hey, great seeing you again. And, uh, I hope it's nothing serious. I hope Bye -bye. it's something you have to do. Please. No, no, no. It's just being busy. I got to go talk to a client. Okay. Well, do, sure. don't let us prevent you from... Wait a minute. We should prevent him from earning money, shouldn't we? <laughs> like, if I can't earn it, neither can you. <laughs> Much See love, you everybody. See you later. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. Right. Mike Chisholm, ladies and gentlemen. He has a podcast called The Letterman Podcast. If you want to look it up, go listen to it. It's a good show. Uh, but anyway, that's that's more of my history. God. I love hearing those stories. They're great. Yeah. Well, I, you know what's strange? I love telling them. Yeah, of course. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of love telling them because, I mean, when I look back, you know, it's a long time. I mean, when I'm talking about KTIM in San Rafael, I'm talking about working at this radio station in 19... Well, when I worked there for money, well, I was on it in 1955. Wow. Okay, doing that that high school show. So when you think about that, it just gets scary. When I say 1955, most people are thinking, wasn't that back in the Plasticine era? <laughs> Ten years old. You know, so. And, and every, every now and then I turn around, somebody else I know is dying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's the thing you have to look oh, forward to. As you get older, if you get older... You're going to find out about <laughs> yeah, people you know who died. Yeah. Uh, and um, you begin to say, wow, why are, why are all these people okay. dying off? Well, they're dying off because you're not. So yes. the news is you're not dying off. Okay. Yeah. But they are. You know, like tonight, today we were watching what last night's Curb Your Enthusiasm with Richard mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. And, and going, didn't anybody know he was dying? Did look at him. Oh, he looked terrible. Uh, my wife and I watched a hundred thousand dollar pyramid last night, and Gilbert was on there. And I did the math. It was about six months before he passed, and he just looked. Oh, he looked Wait terrible. Minute, it, 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 what the newer pyramid or something? Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah, it was from about what? When did he die? Twenty twenty one. It was from a twenty twenty episode or so. Or whatever. You know, he had something. Yeah. I didn't know about it. Neither did a lot of other people. He had cancer. Yeah, he did, cancer? Not, he did not look great. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, Gilbert didn't look great. He never looked great. No, nah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But he sure looked funny. <laughs> well, that was one of the ones that went that I went. I had to scratch my head, you know. Yeah. I mean, how old was he? Was in his 60, mid 67, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't very old. No. Yeah. You know, when he, you look, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't get that uh, avian flu from the Affleck duck. No. <laughs> <laughs> Most famous firing in recent years. Yeah. You know, um, it, you can't be a comedian and try to hold, hold down a job as a mascot for a business sure. because sooner or later you're gonna say something wrong mm -hmm. but you're a comedian what do comedians do for a living they say stuff wrong yeah 
It was a good gig while he had it. Sure. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a good gig. And he, he survived nicely afterwards, however, you know. He was quite hireable. And whenever you go to play a, a gig somewhere, the place was sold out. I mean, oh, yeah. one of those people everybody wanted to see, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know who's got the, the best gig is uh, Tom Kenny with that SpongeBob uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. He's been SpongeBob for what, 20 years? 20 more? Oh, he's that. Easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He must be making a fortune on that. It's stuff. funny when he probably first took that job, he went, Well, how long is this gonna last? You know, <laughs> show about a sponge in the sea. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh no, but he, yeah. he's been SpongeBob for uh for over yeah. over 20 yeah. years. Yeah. You know? Wow. Let me meet myself. Yeah, he must he must be making a fortune. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, and then he also does other you don't see him. You have to wait for credits, but he does other cartoon voice. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, who knew? When I knew Tom Kenny, he was a stand-up comic. All he cared about was making it in comedy. Right. And he had another pal. I'm trying to remember his name now. Who went down to L.A.? He was on my show a lot. I'm trying to remember his name. Al Rocky. Al Al's Rocky. Well, Carl, Carlos Carlos Al Al's Al's Rocky. Rocky. Uh, and he went down to L.A. and he started doing cartoon voices. Mm. And so Tom, Tom Kenny went down to L.A. and started hanging out down there. And Carlos helped get him into the business, I think. You and better call you better call Tom Kenny there, Edward Berger, because. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Reno 911 or whatever it was. All you got to do, all you got to do, Berger. You yeah. get your voice in one cartoon and right. one character that goes for 20 years, and you will be a very wealthy man. Not that I don't know you're not wealthy already. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't have to do anything except say, That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Affleck. He's the Affleck. Only, you know, he's the only he's the only person I've ever had on one of these podcasts. That actually has a catchphrase. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. You know, we'll we'll put out <clears throat> Edward Berger dolls a little thing in the uh, That's right. <laughs> you know, it, uh, that's right. And you could use you could also say uh, that's all, folks. You know, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it shows Tom Kenny's net worth at sixteen million dollars. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. My <laughs> God. Wow. And I haven't called him in years. I should have been nicer. Yeah, you should have. I'm not <laughs> because I still have people in Hollywood I haven't used yet. You know? You're right. So <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what. <clears throat> Lori Thompson, my newswoman on the show, and she also does uh, some stuff with me on the late night show. Lori, I remember because she hated Mark Maron. Hmm. She couldn't stand Mark Maron. Mainly, she told me the other day, mainly because he was disrespectful to me. For instance, hmm. he'd be doing the show, and all of a sudden, he'd be reading the newspaper, and she felt that was just disrespectful. Okay, And it is. Yeah, and it is. Um, yeah. But she came in one day, and she said, they, they started getting a little bit of an argument, and she said, why don't you go back to Hollywood? I'm sure there are people down there you haven't used yet. <laughs> that shut him up and i think that was the last time he ever did my show <laughs> probably but he was a regular you know <laughs> best story about him was sam kennison so hated him have i told this story on this show sam kennison kennison so hated mark maron mark maron was living in the um uh, uh comedy store home it was up on the hill there was this house oh. And Mitzi had bought the house. And then that's where she put up the comics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rather than have to buy him a hotel. And uh, Mark Marin had a permanent room up there because he was a permanent person at the comedy store. Mm. And uh, uh, Kinnison so hated him that one day while he wasn't there, he peed in his bed. Nice. Oh. Famous. Story. <laughs> you know. Andrew's being quiet today, Andrew. 
Yes. This fine day, sir. I'm still pretty exhausted from the, the move and the construction. Up to my, today I was up to, up on the ladder hanging drywall all day in the kitchen. Ooh, I couldn't do that anymore. I can't either. I'm just doing <laughs> it. <laughs> I used to it's be able to give you the tour. It's uh I used to be able to fix stuff and so on. You know, there's something wrong with our radiator, and I'm sure I could fix it. No, you can't. I can't. I can't bend over to fix it like I used to. I, highlight of my week was the the inspector came and passed my plumbing and wiring. Did so you do that cool. yourself? You did. Very yeah. good. Yeah. You did it yourself? Yeah. And it passed? It passed with with no issues found at all. Wow. Uh, that's how I can I finally put walls up. I've been in a in a basically the house right now. I've got a bathroom finished upstairs, and I've got bedroom and an office. You like my new office? Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this though. You say you're doing all this. Was this a house that already existed? Yeah. So yeah. you're just rewiring it and replumbing it and things Replacing, like that. I tore it all out and had to put in all new. Really? So but did the you deal is this. I wanted to downsize. And the house came available across the street from my oldest daughter, where my right. two grandkids, two of my grandkids live, and mm -hmm. my wife had to have it. Mm -hmm. So, but the house was in pre foreclosure, been mm -hmm. abandoned for two years. It had about three quarters of an inch of water in the basement. Mm -hmm. All the plumbing was shot. The wiring was questionable, but she had to have it. Yeah, but what did you do in the basement? I imagine you drained the water. I jackhammered the whole perimeter and put in a drainage system and See, a sump system. Here's where you made your big mistake. You should have just filled it with more water and called it an indoor swimming pool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I saw that thing on, uh, what was that show with the fungus uh, that turned everybody into zombies? And I thought I didn't want to have that happen to me because uh -huh. it was going to get moldy in the basement. So you did all this stuff yourself. Well, I, I get some assistance for the heavy stuff. So I jackhammered the basement and then I had the, I can. You jackhammered the basement? I couldn't even just the, the the a jackhammer. The, the perimeter. It's easy to use. They're not, they're not like it looks in the movies. You're good, man. Gee, you should have invited it, Christine you over it, to do you the jackhammering. You got to dig it out. You put in gravel and new drainage and a sump pump and then you waterproof and put it back together. Yeah, but yeah, I had I hired a couple of young guys that carried all the rubble up and down the cement up and down the stairs, and I did. Well, the can work. you just come by and fix my radiator then? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jiggle the and handle. And a few other things. Jiggle no, the when handle. We, when we first moved in here, I I got all those radiators working. Yeah. I had to tighten all the pipes and stuff because they were leaking and so on and so forth. Mm. I finally got them good. And then you you had this little thing on a radiator that's a, like a steam valve or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. the, the one that's in there fell off, but part of it is still in there. Yeah. And I don't remember how I did it, but I would love to just, I'm, I'm going to call the, I uh, call the, uh, the, super. the super and he'll take call the super. The problem, the problem today is that there's so few people in the trades and the ones that are know that they can get a premium. So when I got a quote to do the electrical that I did myself, it was like, like $16,000. Yeah. Okay material all in i think i'm out four grand and it's done and, and i notice your hair on iron on strangly ends from having been shocked many times <laughs> yeah, well, you don't turn the power on until after you've run the wires and then That's... when you turn the power on you pray right no <laughs> no you do it right you don't worry about it but there's wow. there's a lot there's yeah. a lot to know i had to sit with the building inspector but the building commission to get all the what kind of breakers go to what and what's code. Mm -hmm. so when I did it, I did it right because I don't know that stuff off the top of my head. But the, I, I paid the sixteen thousand. The hard the yeah. hardest part was the really was was getting tied into um, the old. There, there's a, a an iron stack like a, a pipe that goes down the middle of the house that goes out to the septic tank. Mm -hmm. I had to run all the new plumbing to it. And yeah. the people before wow. had cut all the pipes, so I had to with a torch melt lead to get the pipes oh, apart. Paula, do you, do you live in? Do you own that apartment, or, or is you yeah, just right. it's, a, it's a condo? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a condo. So now, when something like this goes, something goes wrong, you know, who do you call? Do you have a super? Go oh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> who do you call? Do you fix it yourself? What? Oh, I definitely fix it myself. <laughs> <laughs> um who do i call uh, um i i i it's, it's like being a homeowner actually so i would call you know like uh whatever professional i would need 
Oh, okay. Because here, like there's, for, a, there's a maintenance guy, but he doesn't do you know he he just does like uh, vacuums of the the, yeah. the carpet system. Well, we moved in, we had these closets, right? But you open them up, and there's it's dark. You can't see in the closets. So how are you going to see to put stuff in there? So I solved the problem. Yes, you did. I went out and bought a bunch of those lights that light up that, that when they, it senses has a sense, mm -hmm. you know, that's usually used outdoors. I hung them in all the closets and I have full lighting in every closet. Now when you <clears> open <throat> the door, I put those in my closet last week. Really? Oh, They're yeah. much easier They're than great. trying They're to wire. I got rid of the old light bulbs and the, and the shitty wiring and I put motion sensor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And all you have to yeah. do is replace the batteries when it goes. These don't, these run on, on line voltage, mm -hmm. but. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Jeff? So uh, my my uh, mother-in-law started getting older and older. That and happens. It, and she would fall down. That happens, too. And she <laughs> couldn't get up. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's no. Marjorie. <laughs> Was she the well, one of the commercial? Could be. So, so Pam went and got all of these lights yeah. that are cameras. Little video cameras, yeah, uh, like the kind that you have outside the house to yeah. see if anybody's getting close to your house and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and she put them all the house to see where her mother was and and what she was doing every day. And mother doesn't even know that those cameras are there. No, no, she kind <laughs> of told us some story about that. Oh, they had to do that. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. smart, smart. Very good. Uh, 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 let me see here. Uh, uh, and uh, John, you live in your own home, do you? Yeah. Yes, Nevada. And when something breaks, who do you call? Well, I've had many careers, so uh, I've been a plumber before. I stay away from electricity, but um, you know, I'm doing the gardening thing and things of that nature. So uh, it a it's a humble little place. Is it a dangerous to do the plumbing and the electricity at the same time? <laughs> Probably. Probably. I, what Andrew was talking about is lead and oakum. Yeah. Right. You had to torch that lead out of there. I used to do plumbing in San Francisco, Alex. Mm. So a lot of the Victorians and uh, antiquated plumbing. Right. Yeah, back what in the was, day. What so, was but, funny but, about that, John, was you know I'm, I've got the torch and I'm melting the lead to get the pipes apart and yanking on the thing. And my brother calls me and he says, "Hey, what are you up to today, man?" I say, ah, "Don't nothing much, just tugging on my flaming shit pipe." <laughs> 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 and I meant it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, sorry but, to demonetize. Plumbing's good, <laughs> good money, isn't it? Plumbing pays well. That yeah. It's really good money now. What they started doing is they send out vans now and they try to sell upsell you at yeah. your house. Like you, you want us to check your washers and it's it's a scam, I think, but yeah, they're working on people that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we wound up having we we went to fix our, our washers and dryers and before we were through, the guy charged us a thousand dollars and it would cost us only six hundred more to buy a whole new set of dry washers and dryers, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, at this age, I'm a sucker for that. Mm. Okay, you know what? What can I say? You if know. I had the plumber run all the water lines and the drain work that I did, the quote I got was twenty three thousand dollars. Wow! And I I did it all. I think I maybe mm. maybe two two grand less than yeah. two grand in materials. Smart move, man. Darlene, who do you call when you have a problem in your house? Charlene. Oh, I thought you said Charlie. Oh, <laughs> I call my son. <laughs> <laughs> That's the job of a son. Absolutely. That's right. That's how, right. About, how about you, Charlie? As long as it, as long as you thought I was talking to Charlie. <laughs> well, of course, I live in an apartment now. I just call the manager. But I, uh, manager. when I when I lived when I was married and we had the house, I did all the work. I did the plumbing, the electricity. Anything that went wrong, I fixed. I think I could learn to do all of that if I were younger. But at my age, I'm not about ready to start. I'm not about ready. Even if to you were younger, you wouldn't do it. No, I was good at certain things. I, If I had something I had to do and I didn't want anybody else to do it, I didn't want to rely on anybody else, I would teach myself to do it, Marjorie. 
You would have relied on somebody. Like, I learned how to be a good husband. Okay. <laughs> when? <laughs> As a practice. <laughs> when? No, you're struggling. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm the seventh wife. What? <laughs> <laughs> we have a wedding anniversary on Wednesday. Yes, we have our wedding anniversary <laughs> Wednesday. But what anniversary is it? It's uh, a, uh I think what uh, year, Alex? I think it's copper. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> it, what is her? She's it's gonna call tins, the it's, it's, it copper. It's it's yeah. It's tinsel. Uh, <laughs> it's our. I've, it, we've been married. I think this is our fourteenth anniversary. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think it's our fourteenth. Right. When do we? Do you? Know, <laughs> what? I'll what year did you get married? I, uh, what somewhere year? around there. Yeah, somewhere else. Who's that? Hey, hey listen, we we've, uh, we've seems we've run out of time today. Oh, wow. Well, just a nice bunch of people getting together with a nice bunch of people. Uh and uh I enjoy this. This is my this is my delight of the week. I don't look upon it as uh, a slog or anything that I have to do. Uh, it just it just goes really nice, and I thank all of you for being here. First of all, Paula, back in good health, Paula. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being in good health, Charlene. Hello to you, and goodbye to you, and thank you so much. Of course, Len, always a pleasure to have you here, Marjorie. That's another story altogether. <laughs> Francine, always nice to have you here. Our newest guy to the whole uh, process, John Ewing, and uh, good having you here. Of course, if you ever need your pipes to be fitted or your electricity to be voltaged, uh, you get a hold of Andrew Deutsch. He'll do it. Come over and do it for you, right, Andrew? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here again. We love having you. She's here every week. I would. Uh, wouldn't be a week without Mandy. I too have the automatic closet lights. Do you really? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah because I have this really old house that was remodeled, but that was one thing they didn't do. They didn't so my light. my boyfriend put them in for me. Light, lights in the closet. Lights in the closet are not all that common, you know? Right. You would right. think that's in one place you'd put lights, right? Right. Jeff Stein, thank you so much for you're still in Florida, right? I still am, but I've got about another week. Another week, and they're coming back, huh? Then we'll start getting home. Yeah, okay. And, of course, Charlie, always good to see you. Uh, and what does it say on your your shirt? I'm um, retired. This is as dressed up as I get. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we sign off, as we do each and every week, with the immortal words of Edward Berger, as he says... That's all, folks. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Good Bye. Thank you for week. doing this, Bye. Alex.